If you are heading to the Moab area and want an unforgettable experience, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video on taking the Potash Road up to the Schaefer Switchbacks. This is a four x four trail, but it's very doable in a basic stock four x four vehicle. It's considered an easy trail and we'll guide you through the whole trail so you can see if it's something you wanna handle with your vehicle or with a rental. And you could even use a tour guide and um, book that through one of the Moab tour services if you don't have a vehicle to handle the road. This video here is looking out from the Dead Horse State Park overlook and you can see down there where there's a road and that's the road that we're actually going to take in the video. I just wanted to show you kind of a bird's eye view of what that road looks like. If you stand in another spot of the overlook at Dead Horse State Park, you can see the road down below there and that's the trail that we're going to do in this video. So to access the start of this trail, you're going to fill up on gas in Moab, and then you're gonna head north on the 191, just past the Colorado River, and you'll see the turn for Highway 279. So you'll take 279, you're actually going to take it all the way until the pavement ends, which is like 16 miles from the um, point where it intersects with 191. But as you're taking this along the Colorado River, the scenery is beautiful, it's really fantastic. And then one of the things you can do is stop and check out the petroglyphs that are on the wall, and I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. You can't miss this area. There's a ton of rock climbers that are hanging out here and, and climbing the walls, and then a bunch of people are stopping to look at the petroglyphs. You'll then continue taking the road along the Colorado River, and there's not a lot of other cars heading with you here, and you'll take it all the way by the Potash boat ramp. This, by the way, is a great boat ramp spot um, if you're gonna do kayaking and stuff. But for today, you're going to continue then on the dirt road and that is where the rest of the journey takes you. So here's a little bit of what that rock wall area looks like with those petroglyphs. You can see some people rock climbing. And then if you park, you can get out of your car and check out where the petroglyphs are. I guess the land used to go a lot higher, especially before they dug it out and built the road. So that's why the petroglyphs are so high up on the wall, but it also means that they've been able to be protected all these years. So it makes for um, really nice, clear petroglyphs. The railroad tracks are by the road too, making for some really pretty scenes along the river. So we are about to start Potash Road up to Schaefer Switchbacks, and this is technically going into Canyonlands National Park, so you need to be sure that you have your park pass with you, or you're gonna pay the registration fee when you get to the end of the trail. It should take about two to four hours, depending on how many stops. It's a four-wheel drive trail, but it's something that a stock vehicle can do. Um, you maybe could even do it with like a Subaru or something if you had the ground clearance. We, of course, have our Jeep, which is a bit souped up. So we have the 35 inch tires, two and a half inch lift, um, and a bunch of the other goodies that we'd want for this trail, but I don't think we'll need them on this one. We're not even going to deflate the tires because I, I don't think it'll be necessary. We never did end up deflating, but I think it would have helped. There were some spots where there were rocks and we were bouncing up and down a little bit. And of course, when you have rocks, that's when you have your biggest risk of puncturing your tires. So I think it probably is a good idea to deflate. I was just too lazy to wait for inflation when we got up to the top. Um, so you can do it without deflating, but it will make for a smoother ride for everybody. You're first going to pass by some um, private land where you have the uh, mining that they do, well, they kind of make some salt pretty much, uh, potassium chloride there. So you're going to pass some of those areas and you'll see some of these other roads, but just stay straight on the trail. You can tell which direction is straight and just don't turn at any of the stop signs that you are going by. There's the route that we came up. Boy, this is beautiful up here. Part of this is private property. It's a little bit of a stretch of private property. And then we got Balanced Rock 
right here. This is about 2.8 miles into the trail and the trail in total is about 18 miles long. Next, you pass by the solar evaporation pools. These are actually pools where they're pumping down water into the salt formation way down underground and it's pushing back up salt water into these shallow pools. And then they add blue dye to make the water evaporate out of this faster. And then they have these giant truck scrapers that come through and scrape off the salt, the potassium chloride from the top. And then that's the potassium chloride we use, you know, in our softeners and stuff like that. So you're seeing that off to your left. It doesn't look very blue from here, but when you're up in Dead Horse State Park, there's just these giant blue lakes. And you're like, what are these lakes doing in the middle of the desert? And that's what's going on here. So you can drive by this and you can see them working. They probably are about to be done with their day though, since it is a little after four o'clock that we are starting on this journey. At one point the road dips down and you actually have a bit of this salt wash and you can check out some of the salt and feel some of the salt. After this, you get to the fence line for the BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, and they have a sign here posted that lets you know you're not allowed to camp here in the BLM land. And of course, you can't camp on the private property. So this is really the kind of trip that you need to do as a day trip. This is not an option where you can camp in the area that we're showing you here. The road is also getting smoother and a little less rocky and becoming more sand-like. Around this point in the trail, it's about six miles, a little less than six miles in, you can take a road to your left that will go by Pyramid Butte. We actually didn't take that road, but it will take you down towards the Colorado River and you go to a, an overlook where you can overlook the river. We had to stop at this location and just get a couple pics at this overlook because you can just see all the canyon walls out behind you in the distance and then the dirt road that we took to come into this area and then the dirt road that we're going to continue really just a spectacular area there's hardly any other cars out here just enough cars where if you ran into a problem there'd be somebody else to help you out or call for help but um, although we still had cell service the whole time that we were down there but really nobody else is exploring this area which gives you so much space to yourself after the next cattle guard, you get to the Thelma and Louise point, which is where they drive the convertible off of the edge. And we decided to stop there and make a little bit of dinner. So we're kind of on an edge part on the rim where it heads over and Looks out over the Colorado River. You can see down here. <laughs> Beautiful. And then behind us is the road where we came from. And then out in that direction, you can actually, if you look real carefully on the top of that ledge is where the kind of pavilion area is at Dead Horse State Park where you can sit and look at this amazing view. But we're down here on the road. We're going to enjoy a nice little snack from down here. And this is the view we get to have in this area. Now the road does kind of head on a downward slope. So we'll be careful on getting too close to the edge. And you get the Colorado River right there. This is the Thelma and Louise Point. Do you recognize it? We are out here, kind of at the point that you can see from Dead Horse State Park. Out here, jeeping, totally isolated, except for the Jeep that pulled up by us. It's like when you're boondocking and nobody is around and then an RV pulls up and parks 10 feet from your camper. 
no, it's it's okay. They were very nice. It was a tour, and you can actually do this trek with a tour from one of the tour groups in Moab. There's a ton of them, and that's a great option if you don't have a vehicle that can do this or you don't feel safe driving this type of terrain. Now we're moving into the space that's really that point in front of Dead Horse State Park. You can look up there and see that butte at the top up there, and that's where the pavilion is for Dead Horse State Park. At this point, the trail does kind of curve at a bit of an angle towards the steep descent down the canyon. And you can tell he's taking it pretty close to the inside here along the mountain edge, along the canyon edge, so that he's not too close to that incline. It feels a lot worse than it looks in this video. Um, there's a little bit of rocks in the ground and a little bit of ledges, but nothing that I think a stock vehicle couldn't handle. And definitely in our two and a half inch lift, it wasn't an issue, but I think most cars are, are going to be just fine. SUVs, you know, four wheel drive vehicles are going to be just fine. And then as you come down here, there's a nice spot where you can pull over enjoy the overlook and then there's some big boulders and rocks that the girls just loved playing at it was like having their own personal whale rock or you know any other the any of those other big boulders that were fun playing at at Canyonlands as well we are literally isolated this just gorgeous gorgeous basin hey girls hello As you head back down the road and it starts heading over to the left, be sure to take the fork that goes further to the left because that will be this pull out that we're taking that'll take you right to the tip of Dead Horse State Park where that apex is out as it comes out forward. What is adding? We're literally down at Dead Horse. We've driven all the way down here. You can see there's, there's no one here. There's virtually no one here. We've seen a couple of cars, but we are down here at the base of Dead Horse. And you can see, there it is. We're standing on the cliff here. Crazy. This is the point of Dead Horse State Park, except we are down on the Potash Road, driving it. So everybody else who's looking at Dead Horse is doing it from up on that butte. Visitor Center is up there and the Overlook area. And it's a cool view, but you know what? Nothing matches the view when you actually drive out here and you come take a look. You can see the Colorado River wrapping around in the bend. And we're going to continue this road heading along the bend and then taking Schaefer switchbacks up and getting into Canyonlands. As we continued on the road, we had one more spot where there was a nice overlook of the Colorado River and you could see all the canyons nearby next to you. 
and um, actually somebody was coming by in there I don't know they had a Tacoma or something and they were wondering what the trek was like for the rest of the journey they had come down from the switchbacks area first so that is taking this route in the reverse starting from Canyonlands working your way down the switchbacks and then working your way through the park and I prefer to go up switchbacks I think it's a little less scary than kind of having to stay in a low gear and ride your brakes going down the switchbacks in this area at this cattle guard you are officially entering Canyonlands National Park There's some signs here in the turnout to take the White Rim Trail. This is a much more advanced technical trail, so this is not the kind of thing that we're doing today, and the kind of thing we want to have other people with us if we're going to do that. You also need a permit to do the White Rim Trail, even by Jeep. Um, so we are not doing that. Instead, we are taking the road that continues and goes up what's called Schaefer Switchbacks. You can also see we're starting to lose our light by this point in time, mostly because we stopped and had some dinner. So in total, the trail took us about four hours. And so it's getting to be, you know, 8 p.m. at night and it's getting to be pretty dark. We have these giant floodlights on our Jeep that aren't street legal, but we can use them on trails like this. And so we weren't real worried about being stuck in the dark, but keep that in mind if you're doing this. So out in the distance there is the road that we just came from and here's our ascent up the mountain. If you're not a fan of heights, you might not like the switchbacks, but they're not really that scary in terms of switchbacks. There's enough space on the road where there's places that you can pass. And when you go to do the turns and you're heading from one direction to the next, you don't even need to do like a Y point turn or anything. You can literally just turn your vehicle, or at least we could with the Jeep, we could just turn our vehicle and keep going up. We didn't have to do any mailman turns or anything like that or back into anything in order to continue up the switchback so they're really not that terrible if you're doing it in the reverse just be sure that you're staying down in first gear um, i probably wouldn't even go to second it's pretty steep here so keep it in low gear and if you're heading up you're just climbing on up When you reach the top of the switchbacks, there's a nice overlook where you can park your car. Lots of vehicles can park their cars and fit here, and you can get a nice picture, and you are almost completed with the trail, and you can look back at that beautiful view. Sunset is hitting those red rocks on the canyon, and it's just spectacular. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it makes your Moab trip unforgettable. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe for more RV and National Parks content. And you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at RV Homeschool. We're happy to answer any questions you have. You can put them below. Thanks so much for watching.